think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm jumping the gun tonight. Are we to comments yet? Well, another. Uh, okay. I got one. Uh, the grounding of it. Did you talk with REA about grounding the building or something? Yeah. Uh, they, they came out, put some more rods around, and um, Mary Telephone Company came and checked this deal out here. Some, somehow, we connected that tower to their ground. To Mary's? Yes. And um, they told me they probably was going to unhook from that and make us come off of there because they didn't want if, if light struck their equipment they want to make sure it didn't come through nothing but their stuff right. that's been a month or so ago and they have not got back with me so I'm going to leave well enough alone but they did say if they made us unhook that they would help put another band back now did REA come out and put some grounds down or what? yeah REA came and put some grounds around the poles okay and, and it's like they said, look, if lightning don't come in, it's going to come in. Oh, yeah. It's going to find a way. But they would try their best to eliminate it. Uh, they came out and did some tests and saw that they needed some ground, and they did do that. I, I saw them put them back. The vertical thing's not just totally tied in the builders. It may be also tied in their ground. But now it's got somewhat of a grid around. It does. Ground. But it comes over and goes into their ground, which is a... Um, Looks like about an inch or so um, copper pipe that yeah, they said 20 foot long, and yeah. they come in there. Sometimes they put salt mm -hmm. in there. Brian, yeah. yeah so. Okay. Well, I was just yeah. thinking about that because lightning was pretty prevalent in it for a while. Okay, number 10, comments on board members. Okay. Um, I had two things. One, I know I missed a couple meetings. I wanted to apologize to everybody for that. I finally got our scheduling lady convinced that I do actually am actually supposed to come to this meeting. Uh, so hopefully she'll put scheduling. Um, so, uh, and the other thing is we're talking about communications and how well the dispatchers are doing. I, the officer involved, shooting, the other <coughs> listening to it, listening to all the traffic on the scanner and all. And uh, I just wanted to say you pass it on that I thought they did a, a a, good, a great job of relaying information and coordinating everything. Everything came together really well um, from the way I was listening to law enforcement, EMS, and the fire department when they got called out, and everything seemed to, to jail pretty well. So I, was, I, think she did I, I, was, I was very pleased. Because not everybody handles a shooting case every day. Right. In Washington. Right, to get that thrown at you on a Wednesday night. Another you know. And another thing, on that same line, we had. I had law enforcement up there that was not pleased. So I had Bert come back and burn a copy of all of the radio traffic and the telephone traffic. That was all coming in here at one time. And I'm going to use that tape that to bring to light to the, to the law enforcement. Hey, you're not the only one on the radio even though you may think you're the most important one at the time. It was just too much chit-chat, uh, unnecessary radio traffic. And I'm going to list, I'm gonna let those law enforcement listen. Was this really necessary, what you said? You know, or this or that? You know, so. These are where coming to. That's right. 286 traffic calls. That incident for an hour or so. 286 that came through those girls. Yeah. <coughs> well, they done an outstanding job, yeah. you know, and uh, I don't know what I'm saying or what Chad said, but like I said, I'm going to use the tapes to, uh, when I hear, when we talk, when the SO trains again. I'm going to plug in so I can listen to this. That she, they not only talked to Millery, they talked to the fire department, they talked to trans, the uh, ambulance people, they talked to Lifeline, mm -hmm. they talked to the Sheriff's Department, it, and just, like I said, 200, and McIntyre was in there, all the county guys, Chatham guys was mm -hmm. calling. I mean, 286. 
Plus setting up a link, link in the helicopter and. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we did it, uh, you know, the pack, works on the pack. Yeah. And, uh, did that work out? Okay. Yeah, and, and we've been doing some training. Um, it, it, sometimes that thing will ping, you know, which tower, what tower I'm trying to, to patch off of. But we've been doing some training, and uh, the patch is working pretty dang good. There's some places there's a little problem. Right. Of course, we know that's a problem in our county. We've got some dead areas, but... Uh, How, Bert, does that, how does the dispatcher, she can talk on either frequency that she's got and be heard by both dispatchers, sort of right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I listen to that, but I think they, they may have to take control and give some direction sometimes when there's a, a mm -hmm. lack of communication between the two different agencies right. and get them started off, you know, where they know. Yeah, really all they're supposed to be able to do is when they patch, you can meet, you start talking. Does it sound like they were? Yeah, I, I know we're talking about because she said on the on the channel, the, the uh, hospital frequency, and I think the um, one of them, will, I'm not familiar with that frequency. And I said, no, all they got to do is when you get those patches, all they got to do is start talking. They don't, they don't. They don't have to start trying to figure out what frequency on. All they got to do is start talking. So that was a little training issue. That's awesome. Any other good Lord? Yes, sir. Uh, Lord, let me make a comment about that. I'm not understanding everything that you're saying about that situation. Evidently, there's some traffic on that. You get the MT well, please. Well, it's what it was. Was extraneous. Uh, deputies just. Tell them where their location is. Which location? You know, I mean, it was just constant. Uh, uh, give me the, give me the uh, twenty of uh, land officers. Not, not just one time, right. ten times. You know, and and it was just if they would just if, if they would have just listened, been more listening to what was going on rather than trying to be a part of it. You know, okay. 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 My, my reason for asking that, I know Barry when I was police, and nothing against fire department and rescue squad. They were uh, wonderful people. We need them. Got to have them. Oh, yeah. But I've, situations like that I've seen where they'll break in on you and want to know what's going on. What's, can I come in? Do I need you to come in here? No. And this dire situation where you got to let law enforcement do their job, right? You know, then if you need it out, and that's what the dispatch is for, you say, hey, I need, I need, yeah. to, I need to call this person right here. Yeah, I think th there's only one thing that I saw that probably could, she should have told them, 1033, emergency traffic out there. Right. And that would have cut out a lot of that. Uh, what, what the rescue and the fire departments and all, they're on different frequencies, and then they'll start talking, and the grounds carry out. I mean, carry trying to talk, it drowns him out. They just, I mean, they'll see me talk, they walk on the top of the wall. Yeah. Well, you brought that up, Mary, and I'm seeing a more and more need for the fire 